repair them, like drill a hole here. I'm Professor Musso. And I'm talking about E, E, B. That means educational building broadcast. Initially it was Entwerfen, Baukonstruktion and Baustoffkunde, design, construction and materials. I'm a professor at TUM. TUM is the technical university in Munich, leading university in uh, the technical field in Germany. And I'm going to talk about building construction and materials. So we have uh, construction, construction being devised in three categories, one being the load-bearing structure, second being the skin of the building, and third being the finishes. And to uh, construct these we need materials. Materials, here we have three big categories, one being minerals, minerals, second being metals, and the third being organic. So the first two here might coincide and I might have certain parts of the finishes as well that go in the category of the skin or of the load-bearing structure. Like for example, I'm in a room here. This room consists of walls and some of these walls are load-bearing and others aren't. Like this wall here doesn't seem to be load-bearing. It's hollow. This wall over here also hollow and uh, it can't be load-bearing because there's a big window on top of it. On this side of the room we have two walls. This here sounds different but uh, maybe it's not load-bearing because the, the ceiling spans from this side to the other side. So this side has to be load-bearing and here it's not a wall anymore. The wall has shrinked and become Columns. So the columns link to uh, the ceiling and the ceiling we see a white surface uh, on top of us and this white surface is a suspended ceiling and behind the suspended ceiling is the load bearing structure. So um, as you can see all seems white in this room but um, some of the parts that we see belong to the load bearing structure others to the finishes and other parts to the building skin. So to organize the materials that we need to construct load-bearing structure, skin and finishes, we need a concept. If we don't have a concept, it's um, clueless. Like for example, I'm sitting on a chair as you can see in this row we have other chairs and all of these chairs you can sit on but they have uh, different design concepts and for these design concepts uh, the designers have been taking materials and integrated them in a concept and all of these concepts are valid although all the chairs uh, have a different visual aspect and they, are, they have differences in uh, seating comfort and so on, but it's all valid chairs. So this looks like a ventilator, but it should be a door stopper. So there was a cable going around here, being linked uh, to the door itself, and then uh, the weight of a bottle filled with water would be 
slowed down by the fan and then, um, well, it, doesn't, it didn't work. So my concept here was very clear in my mind, but if it doesn't work, it's not worth a thing. So our concept is here to tell us how we should uh, organize the materials in a way that uh, something interesting um, results. This is a building I designed as a student. It's a one family house, it's supposed to be energy efficient. You can clearly distinguish the exterior load bearing wall. Then you can see on the inside a cavity wall and um, the roof structure on top of the walls and uh, this model expresses the load-bearing structure and the uh, air circulation concept both at a time. So you might think architects only design uh, buildings as a whole and they leave the rest to the builders but this is not true. Architects can design load-bearing structures here we have uh, two uh, carpentries that are different concepts, belong to the same building, but are of a different kind and have been designed by architects. So uh, don't think uh, the domain of materials and construction only belongs to the builders. Building doesn't have to be uh, something which is arts and crafts, it can be highly industrialized, it can be uh, robotized. As we can see on these pictures here, that describes uh, a robotized building process. It can have concepts for the skin as well, putting an accent on certain aspects, like for example balconies in this case, or a skin which is not load-bearing in the second, or using uh, natural materials like clay in the first example. When constructing, we will have to invent uh, certain pieces, uh, maybe design them out of lumber or out of uh, uh, plywood and other pieces we will buy uh, because they already exist. They fulfill a certain uh, topic and uh, they can be bought on the building market. We know about their quality and this is why we want to integrate these industrially produced elements in our construction projects. So this staircase is not um, an example of highly industrialized buildings, but uh, certain parts are tailored to measure, like for example the steps out of granite. Uh, some uh, parts, like the railing, are made out of uh, industrially produced profiles. Here we have a square tube, Here on the other side we have a round tube, and uh, then we have uh, linear elements, like uh, here the handrail, which is a um, plastic profile that has been clipped on a flat bar. Yeah. So we have to know about these uh, industrially produced profiles to be able to assemble them to something like a staircase. This column here clearly belongs to the load-bearing structure. It cannot be load-bearing. So it sounds completely different. Load-bearing or not load-bearing? Maybe half-half, because it touches here, but probably uh, it's purely decorative. So here I'm in a workshop. In the workshop we have tools, and with these tools we will cut the materials to form the elements that we want to um, glue or screw together. So here I have a mechanized tool, a circular saw. So 
to assemble the different pieces um, I need tools and with the tools I'm going to prepare them like drill a hole here or screw them together. Screws are connectors and here in this uh, collection I have different screw sizes, different lengths so that I can um, screw together my pre-cut wooden elements to measure. The screws once again are industrial produced elements while these here I'm preparing by myself. So as we are at a university uh, we have paint as part of the building skin as well. We have a research lab concerning the building envelope. You can change in the upper cube the south surface um, for very energetically advantageous uh, solutions. So the load-bearing structure consists of foundations and then we have a steel, steel structure bolted to the foundation. We have columns that are supporting the primary structure which is below the secondary structure. Then we have bracing so the whole thing doesn't fall to one side or the other. Then we have the little box on top of it which is a construction by itself. So instead of a window here we have glass blocks. These glass blocks better be non-load bearing because otherwise they will crack. So they are not part of the load bearing part of the building construction, but part of the skin of the building. Next time we're going to speak about systems. Mm -hmm.